This is Twit. The way that, that Gizmodo got started was I had started blogging in probably summer of 2001, which was relatively early. I think that there was not, there was maybe like a few thousand bloggers at that point. And I just started a personal blog. I, um, I was, uh, you know, had lost my job at Red Herring and was really couldn't find, like no one would give me a job. And uh, a friend of mine who was an editor at Wired said, what you should do is you should start a blog and just sort of start writing and, you know, get your name out there and think of it as like a way to generate ideas that for pitches at the very least. And, and I was sort of like, well, write for free. Yeah. Um, I'm used to getting paid, you know, like I'm used to getting paid $2 a word or whatever, you know, you would get paid back then for freelance writing. And yeah. uh, he's like, no, no, just do it. And like, I think it'll lead to something really good. And so I, I did, I just started it. And I remember the first time, um, I think like Doc Searles was the first person to link to me. Uh, that was like, that I kind of knew, like I, that I had heard of, like I knew I was like, Doc Searles, you know, Doc Searles is like an early pioneer in blogging, like an amazing guy, like super smart. And, um, I was really excited that, that, that happened. And, um, I was friends at the time with uh, a guy named Nick Denton, who was chairman of a company called Moreover in San Francisco. And he and I had become friends in, uh, in San Francisco and he started blogging around the same time that I did. And he moved to New York. I think I actually helped convince him to move to New York because he was thinking about moving to, I think, LA. He was like, San Francisco's over. Uh, I'm gonna move to, and this is like 2002. Uh, he's like, I'm gonna move to LA or London or New York. And I was like, move to New York. It's like, it's great. You know, the city's great. Because I, I had moved there after I'd lost my job from Red Herring. I was actually supposed to move on September 11th, 2001. That wow. was the day I was supposed to fly to New York. Uh, but I moved a few weeks later and um, no job, no work. No one would hire me. I was like freelancing for, uh, I think like NASDAQ International Magazine was, was paying my rent. Um, and, uh, you know, what little work I could get from Wired and a few other places. And... Um, you know, we were just like hanging out. It's like spring 2002 and we were talking about blogging. And he was asking me why I didn't post more to my, to my regular blog. And I said, well, it's just tough because if I have to spend time writing, like I'm trying to, you know, I'll, I'll really focus on trying to find freelance work that pays rather than writing, just writing blog posts, which may or may not, you know, pay, but it's not, obviously not going to directly pay my rent. And he said, well, what if we created something and I paid you to do it and we just picked a topic and we thought, and we just kind of see what happens with it. And we talked about it and, and I was, you know, I knew it had to be something in tech and it seemed like if something was going to be able to maybe be a, build a business out of it, that it would, could be gadgets. There was no actually dedicated gadget sites at the time, as far as I could tell, there's certainly no gadget blogs. We were really interest, in, uh, influenced by, um, I'm sure you know, Glenn Fleischman. Yes. Um, so he did an amazing blog called Wi-Fi Networking News. And um, yes. And it was like this, and it was kind of this revelation for me where you could do, it, obviously you couldn't really start a magazine about Wi-Fi because um, you just couldn't justify the cost that would be involved. But with a blog, with which cost basically zero to, to start, you could create a publication that was really focused and just kind of really zero in on it. And I mean, I just loved Wi-Fi networking news. I, I just started you know, just discovered Wi-Fi and, and gotten a router and, and a, you know, Wi-Fi card, one of those like Orinoco cards, Orinoco silver cards for my laptop and all that stuff. And, um, and I just was like, this is like, amazing that you could just do this. Like you could just say, I'm going to be the place where I tell you about everything that's going on in this world. And I was like, that's what I want to do with gadgets. I want to just be the place where you can see everything that's going on and everything that's interesting in that world. And, you know, it's going to be my filter because it's going to be me deciding what's interesting or what's, um, you know, what I think is, is worth, you know, kind of sharing. But that was sort of the, the point was that with a blog, you were fine. You were engaging with like a certain person's take or perspective on that world. 